What is your fate? My duty is my fate. What is your fear? Not being able to get 60 FPS. <laughs> What's going on guys? In today's video I wanted to compare a few of my Ryzen CPUs in Space Marine 2 because this game is very CPU heavy apparently. So we're going to look at the Ryzen 3700X which I guess can be considered as a somewhat console equivalent. We're going to look at the Ryzen 5900X as a 12 core. We'll also disable one CCD and run it as a 6 core and also my Ryzen 7800X 3D. So without further ado Let's hammer our way straight into this. Eternal service. For the settings, we're using an RTX 4090 at 1440p with DLSS set to quality and the ultra graphical preset. We're going to start with the Ryzen 3700X and work our way up. And for those that may be confused, the, the reason why I'm using an RTX 4090 at 1440p with the LSS quality is because we want to ensure that we're entirely CPU bound consistently. And that happens actually 100% of the time. We're going to get to see exactly what these CPUs are capable of. And this is the very first mission, the very first part of the mission. Actually, you have to fend off a, a Tyranid attack and there's a lot going on. So this right here, I would say, is representative of some of the heavier areas in the game. Although there are some areas that are even heavier later on. I wanted to present a very heavy scenario and a lighter one. But yeah, the 3700X here is actually capable of delivering 64 average FPS and 52 FPS for 1% lows. Which is actually a bit better than I thought it would be. Now if you've been paying attention to the actual FPS, we do drop below 60 FPS sometimes. There are some very heavy areas in this game and it's not always consistent. But I would still say the 3700X actually provides a very decent playing experience here. Now this is the next area after that combat section that we just looked at. I'm going to call this the exploration area or exploration section because that's kind of what it is. You're just sort of making your way to the next objective. And I wanted to examine this because you do spend a lot of your time in, uh, in scenarios like this, you know, where you're making it to the next big battle and then the next big battle. And here we see uh, a lot better FPS with the 3700X. Here we're actually averaging 73 FPS. So we're well above 60. And for 1% lows, we're at 61 FPS, which is actually pretty decent. I was thinking of actually uh, checking out a Ryzen 2600 that I have as well. But I don't have it on me at the moment. And the Ryzen 2600 is actually not a very good gaming CPU. It really wasn't when it launched many years ago. But especially now in this game, it'd probably be getting like 30, 40 FPS with terrible 1% low. So, I don't know. Maybe another time. But I think we get the idea. 3700X actually does a bit better than I thought it would, if I'm being honest. That said, let's take a look at the Ryzen 5900X. Now for the 5900X, I'm going to put both the 12 core and 6 core with one CCD disabled next to one another so you guys can see. There actually isn't a big difference. I guess the 6 core variant has a bit better 1% lows, um, actually and averages. But again, you could run this mission again and probably get slightly different FDS just because it, it all depends on how the mission plays out, how fast you kill the enemies, where you're looking at, and that sort of thing. Uh, now, I had a feeling that the gaming performance would be very similar. If you look at Ryzen 5600, 5800X, 5900X, 5950X, when it comes to gaming, they all perform very similarly. I don't think there's a lot of games that really take advantage of a lot of cores yet. But, yeah. I think for this one, I'm probably just going to use the 5900X 6 core as representative of the Ryzen 5000, which is actually a pretty good, decent gain over the Ryzen 3700X. How big of a gain? Well, if we throw Ryzen 3700X on the left, the Ryzen 5900X is 21% faster on the average FPS and 15% faster on the 1% lows. Not a massive, as massive of an advantage as you might think, 
but that's what it is. Now, as far as the configuration, maybe I, I forgot to mention that earlier, although all my configuration is in the description for my PC. I haven't overclocked any of these CPUs. They're running PBO, obviously, and we're using 3600 megahertz RAM, 32 gigabytes CL16. And these are the numbers that I got. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Let's take a look at the exploration area. If we now move and take a look at the exploration area, here we're getting overall higher FPS. But again, if you compare the 12 core 5900X versus the 6 core 5900X, not a huge difference, although the 6 core variant is a little faster. 86 average FPS 12 core versus 92 FPS 6 core. 71 FPS 1% lows 12 core versus 75 FPS 6 core. So again, I'm going to use the 6 core variant as representative of the Ryzen 5000 and let's compare it to the Ryzen 3700X and see how much faster it is. With the 3700X on the left now, we can see that the 5900X is actually a bit faster now than it was in the combat section. Not really sure why that is, maybe it's because there was so much going on. But here, the 5900X has 92 FPS for averages versus 73 FPS on the 3700X. That's a lead of 26% for the 5900X on the average. And for 1% lows, the 5900X is at 75 FPS versus 61 FPS for 1% lows on the 3700X, which equals to a 23% advantage for the 5900X on the 1% lows. That's a pretty decent gain and about more of uh, what you'd probably expect. So that's very nice. But what about the 7800X 3D? That should be a nice, nice gain, definitely over the 3700X, but let's go ahead and see exactly what it is. And here's the Ryzen 7800X 3D, guys. AMD's latest and greatest gaming CPU. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a beast. In this combat area, I mean, it blows both the other CPUs away, especially the 3700X. That's a really crazy jump, but we went from 64 average FPS on the 3700X all the way to 110 FPS average on the 7800X 3D that's like close to double right as a matter of fact the 7800 xd is 72 percent faster on average fps over the 3700x and it's 44 percent faster on the fps averages over the 5900x and for one percent lows we see really nice gains we're at 85 fps one percent lows on the 7800 x 3d compared to only 52 FPS on the 3700X, which actually isn't too bad on the 3700X, versus 60 FPS on the 5900X. That's an advantage of 64% faster on the 1% lows over the 3700X and 42% faster on the 1% lows over the 5900X. That's a very nice, great job from AMD, and it also consumes very little power compared to the 5900X, which consumes like, like 100 watts. So yeah, that's actually pretty good. We didn't really see an impressive uh, performance jump with Zen 5, unfortunately. I mean, it's been kind of hit and miss and you have to test with uh, different versions of Windows and uh, administration modes. It just seems to be a bit of a mess. I, I just hope that the 9000X 3D at least can bring some different i don't know better performance gains at least in a meaningful way because i was actually thinking of maybe jumping into the uh, 16 core maybe if they add uh, vcache to both ccds that would be nice but i guess we'll, we'll wait and see or maybe i'll just grab an intel chip if it's uh noticeably faster than my 7800 x3d i am not opposed to get intel at all it just so happened uh, that I stuck the Ryzen mainly because of the upgrade path. It was easier for me. But that's a story for another video. But that concludes the combat section uh, of the video. Let's take a look at the exploration and see if things are uh, at all different there.
On to the last part then, the exploration section. So the 7800X3D is still far ahead compared to the other two CPUs. Although it's dropped a little on the 1% lows, but still we have 126 FPS averages versus only 73 FPS average on the 3700X and 92 FPS average on the 5900X, which equals to a 73% advantage over the 3700X FPS averages and a 37% advantage over the 5900X averages. And for 1% lows, I mean, it's crazy. It's 101 FPS for the 1% lows. That is higher than the other two CPUs average FPS. But anyway, the 7800X 3D is 66% faster on the 1% lows over the 3700X and 35% faster over the 5900X's 1% low. So again, very, very nice uh, jump in performance with the 7800X 3D. And uh, yeah, that uh, that pretty much concludes uh, my video. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, I guess leave a comment down below and let me know. As far as uh, uh, my takeaway on all this, well, I, I actually thought that it would be worse on the 3700X, I guess. I thought that it would be difficult to maintain uh, 60 FPS, uh, but no, it, it really isn't. 3700X actually kind of surprised me. Uh, even the 1% lows are pretty good. I mean, yeah, they're a bit below 60 FPS, but not by far. They're still in the 50s. That's still a fairly smooth gameplay experience. Although keep in mind that there are more uh, demanding, some more demanding areas I've encountered out there, but not, not by much. I think the combat section in this video is fairly representative of uh you know some of the worst most taxing cpu areas but that that does it for this video guys um took me quite a bit of time to put this together but i did enjoy looking into it uh, because i do enjoy looking into these things but you guys let me know what you think down below give the video a like subscribe for more and i'll see you in the next one peace